How's it going? How are you all doing today? Hope you're all having a lovely day. All right. So it looks like this is stuck at 5 volts and 200 milliamps. So 5 volts, 200 milliamps. So it's not getting to 20 volts. Common problem. Let's see if we can figure it out. Lewis has fixed this something. Is it repair laws? Because you've done more than anyone I know. Well, I've done nothing so far, so... As long as someone else has done more than... If anybody else has done more than nothing, they've done more than me. All right. Can you see the corrosion? Because I can see the corrosion. I'm just kind of curious if you can see it from here. So this is something that I've been doing a lot of recently. So I've been tr so what I've been trying to do here is create a happy little framework for people to be able to see things the way that I see them. I want you to see that. I want you to see that little green thing over there. I want you to see that little cap over there. I want you to see that green on the Q side of the QFN. I want you to see that resistor that's not soldered properly. So each time one of the newer employees that I have misses something, I've been adding it to the sheet. But I'm also going to add some of my own. And I'd like to continue adding to this. So I'm just kind of curious if any of you were able to see that corrosion. Because what I, I, I drive my employees nuts with this. I know I must drive my employees nuts with this because they'll be working on a board and, I'll, and the, they'll say, I can't figure it out. And I'll say, yeah, I see it. And I'll, like, I'll be over their desk. So I'll be standing over, like, right over, they'll be sitting on the chair, right? And I'll be, like, watching them over here. And I'll go, no, look, it's right there. And I'll go, what? And I'll go, no, no, look, it's right there. And then they'll put it in the microscope, look for, like, three seconds, and then finally see it and go, how the hell do you? Eagle eye, baby. And what do you see? What do you see? Do you see? Yes. Yes. I'm going to take a picture so I can add it to my wiki. This is an 820-00239 board. What's that cap for, and why would it cause this to happen? That's an excellent question. Let's go over to the schematic, and I'll explain it. And then you'll all learn something. That cap is for pp 3 v 3 g 3 hot What's the importance of pp 3 v 3 g 3 hot Well, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked. That powers my CD3215 chip over here. And the CD3215 is necessary for the charger to give me 20 volts. This is the chip that's going to speak with the charger. It is the USB-C port controller. And if you zoom in, you'll see pp 33 underscore G3 hot goes into the VIN, as in voltage and pin. It's a necessary power rail. And this is going to speak with the charger right here on this line. See? CD3215. Right, it's going to go up here to the charge port. Right over there. It's going to have a nice little robust conversation. It's going to... Hey, can you give me 20 volts? Only if you give me $20 million for my campaign contribution. Okay. And that kind of goes like that. So this cap is probably short to grow. So what we're going to do... Be a little creative here. I'm going to bend this shield so that I can remove that cap using some tool like this. Now again, is this the, the nicest, happiest thing to do here? Not really. Does it beat telling the customer that they have to buy a new one, like what Apple's going to do? Kind of, sort of. You know, so I just bend this shield out of the way because it will allow me to address the issue that's happening underneath the shield better. We turn on our soldering irons, pronounced with two Ds. There is no L in soldering. At least not in America. What I want to ask is how does someone with a minimum wage job actually afford to live in New York City or even in suburbs? Uh, you have multiple roommates or you live with your parents or your family. So most people, like, when they say, well, how is anybody going to afford to live here? You can't afford to live here. But their, their standards are, like, I hate to, uh, this, is, this is so going to get quote mine when I run for mayor in 2050, but their standards are too high. Like, if you want to live somewhere else in the country, if you want to live in a normal part of the country, 
then by all means have high standards. But if you want to live in the, you know, in the supposed economic capital of the world or whatever the crap people think this shithole is, then you're going to be competing with millions and millions of people that have way more money than you. So the way that you're going to afford to live here is by living with uh, roommates. Like, I, I mean, I've had, peop I've, I had people say, well, I can't believe that someone would expect someone to live on only $13 or $14 an hour in New York City. How are you affording an apartment? It's like, yeah, get a, get a fucking roommate. Like, don't get me wrong. Don't get it twisted. I had roommates, and I did not like it. It was awful. It sucked. It was a shitty, annoying thing, but it was a rite of passage. Like, you, you know, your first job, before you have a clue what the fuck you're doing, and before you have any real job experience, before you can actually provide real value to an employer, you're probably going to have to have a roommate, you know? I'm sorry. When you're 18 years old, you're not going to just immediately move out to a 1,100 square foot apartment. Uh, and don't get it twisted. New York City real estate is ridic is overpriced garbage. Don't, don't, like, I'm not saying it's not overpriced garbage. It is overpriced garbage. It sucks. It's bullshit. But... Like, well, people in New York City have roommates. Lots of people in New York City have roommates. And it, it like, it, I, I agree that New York City real estate is garbage. I agree that it's a bullshit market. I agree that they artificially prop the prices up by keeping places vacant forever so, the, so that it can look like it's worth more than it is to other people so that they can then inflate prices to their other customers. Trust me, I'm, I'm with you there. It's just there's a part of me that always gets a little triggered when someone who's like 18 years old says, it's, you know, the, 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 the idea of living with a roommate is just, you know, it's, it's beneath them. Like, yeah, you know, having a roommate sucks, but it's also shit that you have to do if you want to live here before you have uh, a better paying job. It won't kill you, you know? It's not gonna kill you. It's not gonna kill you. It, don't get me wrong, it sucks. It absolutely sucks. Having a roommate sucks. Having a roommate that invites their newly found baby daddy over every night and has him pee on the toilet seat and fuck up your kitchen and... Trust me. Trust me. I've been there. It sucks balls. Uh... Okay, now the really hard thing is to fit a replacement cap in there. Also, there's this resistor that looks like it's seen better days. Resistor. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. The probe point to that cap is underneath the underfill. So I would actually have to break through the underfill to make a new solder pad so that I could uh, have a wire to solder that cap to. It's a lot of OCD for a semi-necessary cap. That would be quite a bit of OCD for a semi-necessary cap. Let's try it anyway.
Okay, wire. Cap. I'm gonna try heating it from the top. There's really no sp space to heat on the side. All roads are pointing to me removing that cap that's over here so that I can have space to work on this cap over here. Okay, there we go. I've got that cap soldered in. Now I'm gonna get this wire that was going from that little trace under there. Abscess Sushi Imminent. Thank you, good sir. And also, Anel just let me know that it arrived, so thank you very much. It's more than I deserve. Okay, let's get that wire that we just prepared under there soldered on. Yes. And there we have it. The cap is on. Now we're just gonna put on the resistor on the side. You may wonder why I'm not using hot air. It's because the chip next to it is underfilled. I'm trying to heat the pad on the board through the through the top pin of the resistor, which is kind of a not the best strategy. It's the strategy I have, though. This new flux tube really doesn't want to shoot out flux. I think that Paul engineered these new flux syringes to not shoot out the proper amount of flux. Oh, we're not gonna shatter the NAND. That's the shield we're touching, we're not touching the NAND. NAND is safe. NAND is as safe as can be. <laughs> 20 volts, 700 milliamps. But wait, there's more. Okay, so, as you can see, it is booting into Windows. 
So there is content on it, which means I did not destroy the NAND. So that is there. It's booting. It charges. It's beautiful. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. We'll see you all in the next video. Bye now. The issue with this machine, as can be seen from the schematic in the board view, we had one resistor that had corrosion on it, but this is for display port, so this did not matter. And one capacitor to ground for PP3V3 underscore G3 hot. The power rail required for the CD3215, which talks to the charge port, to get us 20 volts to turn on, and that was not working. But now it is working. And the machine is happy. It's gonna go back to a nice happy little owner after my little and uh, that's that. That's a, that's a common area for corrosion. It happens all the time. I did make a mention of it in my wiki, and I th would really highly appreciate it if everybody here would be able to help me with my wiki as time goes on. So if somebody were new to the business and wanted to get into it or just wanted to figure out how to fix their own machine, you could actually go troubleshooting guides over here on my wiki at wiki2.rossmangroup.com. MacBook Pro. This is an A1706. Click it. <clears throat> Click it. There we go. Charger stuck at 5 volts instead of 20 volts. And it says right here, corroded cap. Corroded LDO cap for pp 3 3 underscore G3 hop, blah, blah, blah. But check CB300 first. So right over here, CB300 is corroded, but you can't see it because it's hiding under the metal around the NAND. Look closely. So the idea here is to make it as easy as humanly possible for people who want to fix their own computers to be able to fix their own computers, particularly the MacBook board problems I go over here. Because as you can see on the schematic and the board view, CB300 was the problem, and it is indeed included in the wiki, and I'm even going to update it with a picture. Now, the problem is that there's a lot that needs to be done. There's a lot of work that has to get done. All of these videos, and there's going to be more of them, but at the very least, all the videos that you see over here, they need to be covered. A bunch of these videos are not in the wiki. Now, if everybody here were to take one of those videos, watch them, and make an entry into the wiki, we'd be done. There's 1.3 million people that watch this channel, and if even 1% of the people who watch this video on this channel were to watch one of those videos and then input the information into the wiki, I would have all of the content from the past seven years inside the wiki easily indexed for anybody to be able to go through. Now, again, I am going to go through this on my own. I'm slowly but surely going through each one of these old videos and going through my, uh, you know, the repairs that my own staff members do and inputting it into the wiki. But I, as one person, it will take me forever to do this. But if we would be able to harness the power of all of you, we could get this done in less than half an hour and have every single one of those done. So I plead with you, I beg of you, please help me make this because this will be an amazing resource to help new people who want to get into the field. It'll also help people that want to be able to fix their own machines if they can't afford a repair shop. Or maybe it'll help repair shops that are, are local to a customer be able to fix something that otherwise would have had to be outsourced to someone like me. If you're able to help me with this guide, if you can make this guide better, then more and more people will be able to do this work and less and less people will have to send crap out to people like me to have it fixed, which and will, in the end of the day, have a slightly better repair industry. So I would highly appreciate it. It's wiki2.rossmangroup.com. That's wiki2.rossmangroup.com. Thank you very much. And uh, as always, I hope you learned something. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.